All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to go over a couple of videos and just sort of give an example of the lunacy that's in the world today. It's it's incredible. It really is. It's every single video currently on YouTube. Uh, regarding the millennial reign which uh, you know there is no millennial reign and you know regarding uh, the teachings of Revelation 20 all right everybody's got it wrong it's incredible it's amazing and it's remarkable how easy or how simple it is to see the truth and to understand Revelation 20 but people do not want to understand it they want to confuse it because they saw a movie a Hollywood movie with Nicolas Cage and so now they are gonna build their Bible doctrine based on Nicolas Cage I'm not kidding you look at what all these people are teaching and compare it to the movie Left Behind. I'm serious. I'm very serious. Compare that with what you see in the movie, with you know what they teach, what they teach. Compare that with what you see in that movie, and then <laughs> compare it to Revelation. To what what it actually says in Revelation 20 there's a stark contrast it's night and day now in order for this to work for Revelation 20 to work in um, unison if you will with the Hollywood movie you have to say there are people walking around without a head for a thousand years. All right, you, that's <laughs> it, it. Still is it? Still doesn't make sense. But that's what you have to say. All right, this is why I call it the zombie doctrine, because according to their timeline and according to their teaching, there are headless people walking around for a thousand years who have been resurrected and that the resurrection is not Jesus Christ but rather people without a head all right so uh, that's a big problem I mean for you <laughs> for me I'm putting all my faith trust and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ who has died and resurrected he is the first resurrection and I'm gonna follow him he has led the way for me now all these people that are teaching this zombie doctrine they're trusting in headless zombies to lead the way they will tell you that this is the first resurrection their claim it's not Jesus but rather zombies however they want to describe it let them soften it up because they always will the bottom line is their teaching that headless zombies are the first resurrection in a way they're saying that Jesus is a headless zombie they're mocking the word of God All right, every single one of them they have absolutely no understanding of the Bible and they, they have no business at all teaching the Bible however this is exactly what the Bible said would happen and specifically this is what the Lord Jesus Christ says in Matthew 24 Mark 13 and Luke 21 when he is asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world He's asked specifically, straightforwardly, 
what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And what is the end of the world about? It's about all the lies and deception. All right, now let me show that to you. Uh, first of all, I want to go to this comment. I, mean, I appreciate all these comments. These are great. There are a lot of good ones here this morning when I woke up and read them. Just fantastic. Uh, it's very, very encouraging to see people get it. Like their eyes are starting to open up because it, to me, you know, sometimes maybe it's just in my head. To me, I wonder, does anybody, is anybody seeing this? And now I'm starting to see from the comments that there are people who get it. There are people with eyes that can see. Emily Cat 182. I think this is the comment I wanted to share. I hope it is. All right, let me just read it. Hello, I was saved last October. I've been feeling confusion over lots of teaching. I've been praying hard to our Father to help me. You came on my feet and you make so much sense to me. I've been binge watching you also reading my Bible. God bless you, brother in Christ. I'm so grateful that God, after praying lots, gave me what makes sense to me. I was confused. Yep, here it is. I was confused that the coming of Christ would be like the days of Noah, eating and drinking. I was confused because if there is wars, etc., life would not be going on as usual I do hope he comes soon I yearn for him and uh, okay so I mean yeah it's not about wars and and that's what I was led to believe you know oh you gotta you gotta watch CNN and Fox News and find out when the end of the world's coming you know Dan Rather he's gonna tell us no 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 Dan Rather is not going to tell us at all and that and Jesus specifically says you shall hear of wars Dan Rather is going to get on TV and tell you of rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled don't let Fox News and CNN trouble you For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. This is not, this is no relevance to the end of the world at all. Jesus is making it very clear that the wars and those sorts of things are not of any consequence to the end of the world. None whatsoever. <clears throat> excuse me but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not by and by and these things are uh, are just gonna happen and they've been happening right what's it what's that uh, What's that verse? The beginning of sorrows, right? The beginning of sorrows, not the end of the world. Right? When you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. For such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. So it's very clear the wars and rumors of wars that Fox and CNN sell every day. I mean, they sell it, don't they? And, the, you know, it's just like the old soap operas back in the day. You know, I, I've told this story before, but, you know, back in the early 90s, I had a girlfriend that would watch these soap operas. And she got me to sit down with her one day and watch it. And, well, this girl got kidnapped. I was like, oh, no. You know, and, and the guy, he took the girl and he, and he put her in his closet. I'm like, oh, they gotta save her. They gotta get her. Well, next thing I know, the show's over. I'm like, oh, crap. I gotta tune in and watch tomorrow. Well, eight months later, that woman's still in the closet. I was hooked. I was hoodwinked. 
right. I was bamboozled. I was tricked. I was suckered into that show. Unbelievable. Well, that's what they do on Fox News and CNN and CBS and NBC and ABC and all those, all those guys. They're taking the tricks of the soap opera and luring people in and then suckering them by oh oh we gotta we gotta tune in tomorrow to see what happens you know you know whatever you know they'll uh, you know I don't know if I can give an example because I I'm so out of tune with current events you know I don't know Russia you know there there's a war over there and we might be next or whatever you know I don't know I don't know what's going on in the news don't care but that's how they lure you in they they warn you they warn the they uh, they sound the alarm bells right and then you gotta tune in the next day to see you know how much longer do we got before the whole world's destroyed or whatever you know oh no our country's in trouble you know we need a savior here the president the president's gonna save us right and that's what they're selling that's what they're selling and that's how they hook people and that's how I got hooked on Fox News and CNN as well. I think we're all, uh, you know, uh, subject to temptation, right? That temptation to be lured in. It's the devil trying to lure us in. And <laughs> if you're, you know, really, if you're focused on worldly things, that'll take your focus away from the kingdom of to come. Now the Spirit of God, thankfully, is always there to guide us away from such wickedness. And that's what I want to encourage you all to, to uh, spend your conversation with one another in the Word of God and not in worldly matters that are vain and are soon to pass. Okay, there's the term I was looking for, beginning of sorrow. So let's go back. Here, try to collect my thought here. What was we talking about? Oh, the yeah. So that's not that doesn't have anything to do. The wars don't have anything to do at all with the end of the world. So what what is the gonna you know what's the sort of the thing that has to bring on the end of the world? So it's not going to be a nuclear bomb in New York City, as Orson Welles once told me on the TV screen. Uh, HBO and Nostra Dumbass, or whatever that program was, the man that saw tomorrow, or the man that saw yesterday, or whatever. I don't know what this is. It's just. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here, I, I gotta make this simple. Let me make this simple. And the gospel must first be pub. I'm sorry, published among all nation. The gospel must first be published among all nations. Now I I'll contend that the gospel is published in all nations today. And that there's nothing that is preventing Jesus from coming back today and it is a very shameful place to put yourself in a position where if Jesus does come back today you'll have to sit down and, and explain to him why he can't come back today I mean for example uh, well the third temple hasn't been built well <laughs> uh, I think at that point Jesus is gonna have to sit you down and explain to you that he has rebuilt the temple. It's crystal clear. Clear as day all throughout the scripture. Now, there and there, there's also, uh, you know, there are people say, oh, the Antichrist hasn't come yet. Well, he's already here. And he's in that great city that they call Vatican City. Now, I could go over all these, all these things. And, you know, that's actually one I haven't touched on for a while, and maybe 
you know some some point soon I'll, I'll get into that the woman which is the great whore which is the fourth beast of Daniel which is the beast of Revelation which is the beast that was and is not and yet is it's the fourth beast and the fourth beast of Daniel without a doubt there should be absolutely no dispute it is the Roman Empire now if you understand Daniel you understand the fifth kingdom is the kingdom to come when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the new Jerusalem if you will the everlasting world the everlasting life the new heaven and the new earth that's the fifth kingdom so until we reach the fifth kingdom we're in the fourth kingdom and the fourth kingdom is the kingdom of revelation the beast of revelation it's the fourth beast the fourth kingdom same thing the fourth beast of daniel is the beast of revelation the beast that was that's the fourth beast and is not there's something going on here and yet is well, what is that well it's pretty simple really it's the transformation of the physical empire into the spiritual empire and it lays it out plainly here in Revelation 17 the whore the great whore that sits upon many waters it tells you exactly what that means the waters which thou sawest where the whore sits are peoples multitudes nations and tongues it's not about one country um, you know, um, you know, I, I you wouldn't, uh, there's a lot of uh, baloney being uh, taught out there, but this is it, this is very clear. These people exist all around the world, and what do we see with the Roman Catholic Church? They are all around the world. The seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and one is yet to come. That's speaking of a succession of kings which is a succession of popes and of course Jesus says call no man father for one is your father and what do they call all the popes father and what does the word pope mean holy father he exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God yet he's not God is he no, he's the Antichrist. And when Jesus talks about ant, uh, false Christ, that's the same thing. It's Antichrist. You know, the Pope exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. He presents himself as though he is the representative or the replacement, either one, of Jesus Christ. And he is not at all. If anybody is a representative of Jesus Christ, it's all of us that are born of God because we have Jesus in us and we are in Him. And it's not that lunatic over there at Van at, uh, in Vatican City. Right, and we have clues, uh, you know, given to us all throughout the Bible, uh, namely in, in Isaiah 14 12. But to get back on the topic here if I can remember what I was talking about all right so the end of the world is about the gospel uh, the end of the world is uh, you know first the gospel must be preached here let me read this try to get my thought gathered here and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations then shall the end come then shall the end come and it's right here in uh, Matthew 24 right it's right there in Matthew 24 the gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come and of course if we could find the verse where we are called to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature 
That's what we're called to do. That's why we are a priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. Okay, and I share this uh, quite often. I love these verses. And I, I love going over them. To make things simple for somebody. In Exodus 19, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. We that are Christians are the children of Israel. Make no mistake about it. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. So, what does the end of the world? Uh, what is the sign of the end of the world? Well, Jesus lays it all out pretty clearly, doesn't he? I mean, he even, the very first thing that he says, Take heed that no man deceive you. There we go. There's the sign. What's the sign? Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And what do we got going on today? We got liar after liar after deceiver, deceivers, deceivers, everywhere. It's incredible. Liars and deceivers everywhere. And, you know, you could, you know, you could say, well, these guys, they're just ignorant. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you could say that. Of course they are. I mean, a liar is ignorant. And, you know, they're liars uh, because they're ignorant, if you will. They're ignorant because they're liars. It's really the same thing, isn't it? If you're going to preach as though you have authority, and what you preach is in contradiction with the Word of God, that makes you a liar whether you accept it or not whether you realize it or not it still makes you a liar it's like, I mean you gotta be careful about this stuff man you know I, I gotta be careful about it and so should you right and if I'm if I get something wrong call me out on it 2 Timothy 3 verse 13 but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived what are we reading here in Matthew 24 take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many all right many false prophets shall arise and deceive many this is a consistent theme all throughout the Bible uh, especially in the New Testament here about how the deception is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and you think about this being because in equity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold right many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Why? Because except the Lord except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened all right in other words if God allowed things to play out the way they're they're playing out there would come a point where there would be nobody saved and it has nothing at all to do with the wars and rumors of wars and it has everything to do with the deception that is in the world all right has everything to do with the deceivers waxing worse and worse deceiving and being deceived to me I found this rather remarkable uh, when I was uh, you know um, a new Christian if you will and I wasn't a new Christian until I was 31 years old and 
Oh, no, that's tough, man. For me, it was tough because it's like, man, I'm so far behind. I've got a lot of catching up to do. And so I spent a lot of time. I did. I spent a lot of time reading the Bible, and I still do. And just trying to catch up. And one thing that stood out to me is how, you know, obvious this is. How there's so much warning against deceivers that, it, you know, in the Bible talks about all this. Yet, when I turned on the TV and I, and I listened to, um, you know, Hal Lindsey and Jack Van Amp, Jack and Re Rexella Van Impe and John Hagee and Pat Robertson, uh, those guys, they, I, I don't recall them ever making this point that there's a world of de deception out there and it's worse than it's ever been and it's only getting worse and worse and worse and worse all right so this is that's the key that's the key uh, to seeing the signs of the end times when you see liar after liar deceiver after deceiver then we know that the end is very close all right and I'm not you know it's all these guys yeah, there's not I haven't seen one of these guys if there was one guy teaching Revelation 20 correctly uh, you know teaching the thousand years of Revelation 20 correctly I would point it out I would share it with you and say hey alright somebody's got it somebody's got it I'm looking forward to that I do believe that uh, somebody will eventually get it right but for right now <clears throat> excuse me I'm you know I'm watching this stuff day after day and nobody has got it right even the, the people I subscribe to when they talk about it they got it wrong every single one of them and it's rather uh, phenomenal really because it's so simple and uh, so you take um, what these guys teach um, you'll see this here in a second I think right there they only read verses 1 through 7 because if they went any further than that then they their lives will get exposed you know I mean <laughs> it takes what maybe 90 seconds to read the first seven verses and then 90 more seconds to read the next eight verses I mean maybe three minutes to read Revelation 20 but what, this, they just ain't got time for it you know I I don't know I maybe I'm being too critical there but the the, the problem that I would say is that hey that's okay if you're teaching everything correctly regarding Satan being loosed um, and the, uh, the obvious problem is they're not All right, they're, they're teaching s something that is so phony and it's so ridiculous that these people they got no business at all teaching the Bible none whatsoever alright first of all I want to establish the fact and I apologize if I'm bouncing around here I want to establish the fact that Jesus does not reign for a thousand years all right don't listen to the liars don't listen to the deceivers and it should be pretty obvious anyways that our Lord does not reign a thousand years he reigns forever and ever he is from everlasting and to everlasting he is the first and the last the beginning and the end the Alpha and the Omega and he has promised us eternal life we put our hope in eternal life. We do not put our hope in a thousand years. Uh, it, it's just, it's like nobody is calling these guys out. You know, face to face, nose to nose, chin to chin, calling these guys out and saying, hey, the Bible says this. Why are you teaching contrary to what the Holy Bible says? Really? right here it's clear as day and he he Jesus shall reign over the house of Jacob forever 
and of his kingdom there shall be no end. What are these guys doing, man? Who reigns for a thousand years? Are you? Or are you saying, oh, no, Jesus reigns a thousand years? And then, okay, so when Jesus is done reigning, these two clowns are going to take over. Apparently. I mean, something's got to happen if Jesus stops reigning. Huh? Something's got to happen when Jesus stops. If he reigns a thousand years, something's got to happen when his reign is over. Otherwise, you know, if you can't answer that, you're not being honest. Not with, not with others and not with yourself. Jesus reigns forever. Alright, that's pretty clear. Pretty obvious. Pretty simple. Alright, so let me go over. I'm going to try it different this way, this time. Um, you know, usually I'll, uh, I'll show the liars and then... I'll show the truth, but I want to show the truth, and then I'll show the liars. And I, uh, Revelation 20 verse here. Let me put that over here, and uh, you know, again, so I can do it this way. All right, so let's go to Revelation 1. Well, we have to establish this. This is important. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. Now, if we go back to Revelation 1, it's important to understand that the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, John, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John All right, this is this is important <laughs> it really is and then just stop and think about this alright his angel the angel of Jesus Christ is going to show John things which must shortly come to pass. So what do we read in Revelation 20? And I saw an angel. All right, are you able to put, connect the dots? Are you able to put the pieces together? Really? Because this is an angel of Jesus Christ showing John things which must shortly come to pass. This is not a continuation of Revelation 19. All right. Liars, deceivers will say it is, and it's not. This is a new um, vision that the angel of Jesus Christ is showing John. And it should be quite clear, it should be quite obvious, but if you, you, know, you see this in people that do not believe the Bible they hold in their hands, all right? don't listen to people that don't believe the Bible. Now they'll say, oh, I believe the Bible, I just don't believe uh, the Bible in English. And then, of course, they'll point to an imaginary Bible that does not exist in a language that they do not know. It's unbelievable. But anyways, look, I'm telling you right now, you can believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. You can believe that it is from God, because it is. The Word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever. Alright, so, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season so if we could break 
this down and think about this right here. Let me highlight this. That he should deceive the nations no more. Alright, let's do it this way. That he should deceive the nations no more. Let me do it this way. I'm getting weird on you guys here. Changing it to blue. I don't I can't tell the difference. It looks the same to me. Anyways. He should deceive the nations no more. That would suggest that he was deceiving the nations. Right? I don't think anybody disagrees. And then after the thousand years, he will deceive the nations again. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Alright. Now... There's all sorts of problems when you start to teach that this is after the return of Jesus. Because in order for that to make that case, you have to say Jesus comes and then Satan is boxed up or loose or um, you know, tied up, you know, chained up, whatever. And then, after a thousand years, he's going to be let loose. So Jesus came for no reason. All right? And then, Satan, he's going to go out and gather what his people, that, whose number that is as the sand of the sea. Where where did all these people come from? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's judgment day. It's the end of the world. And we read that in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. It's clear as day. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. I mean, this is why men's hearts are failing them for fear. Because they know, deep down in their soul, that it's the end of the world. That the judgment of God is come. That's why they're having heart attacks, man. That's why all the nations of the earth shall mourn. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. Alright, so in Revelation 20, the end of the world can only be at the end of the thousand years. Alright, now think about this. When uh, baby Jesus came along and, and he, you know, he, he uh, taught and he preached and and um, he did miracles and he did all the works of God. He laid down his life to be the sacrifice, and he took it back up again and ascended to heaven. He has done it all. He has led the way for us. Just as Moses led the way for the people of, um, for the Hebrew uh, people um, out, of, out of the land of Egypt, Moses led his people out of Egypt, so also is Jesus leading us out of this wicked world. Alright? And so we that are born of God follow him. Alright, so back before baby Jesus came along, there was one country, or you could say two kingdoms, one kingdom, two kingdom as one kingdom, one people of God. Alright, there was technically just one kingdom, uh, one people of God, one nation, one country. Think of it this way, at one country in the world that was the kingdom of God was within that country outside of that one country are the nations deceived okay so when we read Revelation 20 that he should deceive the nations no more well that's when Jesus made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him uh, you remember when Jesus says 
The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits. There, well, I thought he did. Maybe Mandela came along and changed that. I, what in the world? Oh, I, I got you. I got you. Let's do it this way. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Alright, so now, whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ has the kingdom of God, you know, in them, right? has uh, the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and there's uh, numerous examples to support this uh, just in case you're not familiar all right you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God Make no mistake about it. We are the holy nation of God right now. This is not the case in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, before Jesus came along, there was one country outside of that country where the nations deceived. Now, Satan can't do that. <clears throat> he can't do that now. But, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, what happens? Well, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world and the, he sends the angels out to gather together his elect right so um so let's get into this a little bit so what happens when we are being gathered together you know i've pointed out numerous times uh in matthew 13 the parable of the wheat and the tares the wheat is gathered up and put in uh, the god in, into the lord's barn and then the tares are gathered up and uh, put in bundles and burned right and it's pretty easy I mean nobody explains it better than Jesus he makes it real simple doesn't he all right so also let's go to you know uh, let's go to first Thessalonians 4 and um, and then for good measure let's open this one here so what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? Well, uh, here in 1 Thessalonians 4, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord now <coughs> all right all right I apologize for that All right, so let's go to First Corinthians. Uh oh, uh, too much coffee. All right, so uh, in fir in First Corinthians fifteen. All right, it talks about um down here what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right so in a so here's a mystery being shown to us <laughs> all right behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump so make no mistake about it here in first Thessalonians 4 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God this is the very same thing 
It's happening in Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's all throughout the Bible. The trumpet. For he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. This is signifying what? It's signifying the end of the world. Alright. Very clear. It's signifying the end of the world of the world again the, the great sound of a trumpet the trump of God and so what happens first the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and again in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed and when this happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory now I want to go back to Revelation 20 and think about this what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up you remember back in the Old Testament when uh, Satan was allowed to deceive the nations that were outside the kingdom of God, which were outside the nation of Israel. Well, you know, it got, the Satan was not allowed inside the kingdom of God. was is not allowed inside that. It's not in, allowed inside um, <clears throat> the country of Israel. Just uh, he had power, influence, and was able to deceive the nations outside of Israel and so now here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him so now um, Satan ha does not have that power over the nations like he once did okay because the kingdom of God is available t to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ All right now think about this Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up and the only people left on earth are the unsaved people alright so what happens well Satan is now allowed once again to deceive the nations is this why <laughs> because they can't explain it is this why they want to stop at verse 7 because it destroys their doctrine whatever goofy stuff they want to sell I mean come on is that why this is very simple really because when we're up in the air the only people left on earth are the unsaved and so Satan goes out and deceives the nations once again All right remember that no, he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years are finished. So he was deceiving the nations before. And then he'll deceive them again after. And then after is when we are up in the air with the Lord. And this goes back to Genesis 3 verse 15. When the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise thy I'm sorry, I butchered that, didn't I? Let me try it again. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, <clears throat> and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, in Psalm 110, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And we read this also in 1 Corinthians 15. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So when this happens in Revelation 20, we are up in the air with the Lord. Alright? And so that it, so Satan goes out and he deceives the nations again. Once again. But this time he is gathering them all to battle. And he's going to camp compass the camp of the saints about. This is when we're up in the air. We're up in the air with the Lord. Remember that? You can't ignore this stuff, man. You can't ignore this stuff. This is when we are up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. When angels gather us together, we're up in the air with the Lord. 
All right, make no mistake about it. We are up in the air with the Lord. When this happens, our enemy is gathered at our feet. <clears throat> this is a prophecy fulfilled that began in Revelation and uh, Genesis 3 verse 15. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all iniquity forever and ever. Uh, again, you know, we could go to uh, numerous places, really. But I'd like to go to Revelation 3, verse 9, just in case some people missed it. Now, there's another dot to connect here. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. This is talking about us being up in the air with the Lord, and that the, God is going to make them come and worship before our feet. They'll be on the ground while we're up in the air. They'll be at our feet at the end of the world and that moment they're gonna know that God has loved us okay it's gonna be obvious to everybody that God loves us and God does love us and we love God and um, we we that are born of God we have everlasting life that can never change alright so and again Excuse me. In verse 10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, if you'd read uh, chapter 19, you would know that the beast and false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire. Uh, this is talking about the very same thing, just from another angle. It's not a... Well, a thousand years later, the devil is thrown into the lake of fire. That's not it. That's not it at all. It's not. That's not it, fellas. I mean, you, you, you got. <laughs> you got to stop and think about this, man. This is the same thing, and this is just telling us it's the same thing. It's not. It's not a second end of the world. It's not a second judgment of God. It's not a second, you know, thing here. This, it's all the same thing, man. You just have to connect the dots. Jesus Christ does not come in the clouds of heaven 27 times. He comes once. He's coming once. All right, and that's, that should be crystal clear all throughout the Bible. All right. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. Afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Jesus is the first resurrection. He Essentially, he's the only resurrection. All right, you go back to Revelation 20. Blessed and holy are they which have part in his resurrection on such the second death has no power <clears throat> alright so are you born of the spirit of God if you are then the second death has no power over you you have everlasting it life you have everlasting life in you right now the second death has no power that can't that can't change Nothing can take that away. All right. <clears throat> Let me just uh, point out a verse here. Just in case you had any doubt, I guess. You know. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. <clears throat> Excuse me, I almost forgot where it was. I and my father are one. All right, so uh, to go back here, and I give them, I give unto them eternal life. Now, if you have eternal life, that's life that lasts forever. That's that that can't come to an end. It can't. 
you can't have eternal life that can be taken away. If you, otherwise, it's not eternal life. It's just a it's a matter of logic. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So if there was the you know, if there was any doubt at all, there shouldn't be any doubt at all. Well, once you have eternal life, it's life that lasts forever. Nothing can change that. Nothing can take that away. But if there was any doubt whatsoever, this should hammer it home. They shall never perish. Okay, let's say that's not quite enough. Well, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Well, that should seal it, shouldn't it? And my father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I mean, that just ham slammers, slammer hams, just hammers that sucker home. There should be no doubt about it. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. You're saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. All right, the second death has no power over you right now. If you're saved right now, if you're born of the Spirit of God, that can never change. You have, whether you like it or not, you're, you, you have eternal life. I'm sorry if that bothers you, but uh, you'll get over it. I'm sure of it. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Right now, right now we are priests of God. I mean, that you, I showed you. Exodus 19, we are a uh, priesthood, an holy priesthood, right? We are a kingdom of priests right now, all right? So we are uh, taught, encouraged, told to go and preach the gospel to every creature. All right, here in Revelation chapter 1, oh... My bad. My bad. In Revelation chapter 1, Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God. All right. All right, this is in the same book. We are a royal priesthood right now. We are priests of God and of Christ right now. We are told to preach the gospel to every creature right now. Right now. And so when we read here in verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Well, if you're born of the Spirit of God, judgment of God has already been granted to you. It's already been given. You're sealed, secured, sanctified, saved forever. That can never change. The judgment has already been given you. It's already been determined that you have eternal life. Nothing can ever take that away. If you don't like it, that's just too bad. You'll get over it. All right. If you are saved, you're saved forever. And again, if you don't like it, you'll get over it. Okay, so this is clearly speaking of us. We are the ones that sit on thrones. He has made us kings. We are a royal priesthood we sit on heavenly thrones not on earthly thrones we sit on heavenly thrones right now right now we are partakers of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ right now every man in his own order Christ the firstfruits afterward they that are Christ that is coming Jesus is the only one that's been resurrected. And then all of us that are born of God will be resurrected at His coming. Because we're following Him. He has died and then rose from the dead and will ascend and, and has ascended to heaven. We're going to follow Him and we're going to meet Him up in the air. All right, first the dead in Christ, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. All right, this is when the angels of God gather together his elect. 
it's the same moment in time. It's not. To, it's, I'm not showing you four different events, right? It's the same event that's being told uh, to us time and time again. All right. So I mean, it's crystal clear. Jesus is the first resurrection. We are partakers of His resurrection. We're going to follow His example. We're going to follow His lead. When He comes in the clouds of heaven, we will meet Him in the clouds. It's pretty simple stuff. Alright. I get it. You know, people like to watch movies. They sit down and they see Nicolas Cage and they think, oh, what a handsome man. This guy must be from God. This, this guy might even be God. Well, no. And no. And no. Don't put your faith in Hollywood movies. Don't put your faith in Nicolas Cage. Alright. Don't listen to anybody. Really. Just believe what the Bible says. You think about, um, you know, what does it take for a man to be saved? I mean, there's a great question asked here. What must I do to be saved? And in Acts chapter 16, that exact question is asked. What must I do to be saved? And the answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I mean, it's very simple, right? It's very, very simple. It's about faith, man. It's always been about faith. And you think about what is the key to understanding? Well, it's faith. Well, what's the key to everlasting life? Well, it's faith. And it's always been about faith. All the way back from the, the beginning. All the way to the end. It's always going to be about faith. And we talked about the end of the world. Well... Why is this world coming to an end? Well, if God allowed things to continue as they were, there would no flesh be saved. You think about in the days of Noah, there was only eight souls saved. You think about in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there, there wasn't even ten righteous. And you think about when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, how many people on earth are going to be saved? You know, if God let things play out, there would be nobody saved. And why? I, I pointed this out to you already. Uh, why? It's because of all the deceivers in the world. It's not because of wars. It's because of all the deception. And it's w waxing worse and worse. It's waxing worse and worse. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And so the key to understanding the Word of God is faith. And of course the key to being born of God is faith. All right. So the key to everything is about faith and putting your trust in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us because He has done it all. And we that follow Him will follow him into the clouds of heaven where he will destroy all iniquity forever and ever and will be set down on a new earth with a new heaven all right so the key is faith 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 man it's always been about faith and so when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven shall he find faith on earth that's a great question, isn't it? Again, days of Noah, only eight saved. Not even ten righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, shall he find faith on earth? Remember what we read. If 
if God allowed things to continue as they were, there should no flesh be saved. Do you think about, uh, are you saved? I mean, that's what I would, you know, I would, if there was any doubt, I would worry. There shouldn't be any doubt. Why would you have doubt? You're a wretched old fool like me. You don't deserve everlasting life like me. But because what of what Jesus has done, we that believe in him, we that are born of God, have everlasting life and we can rest in him. It's real simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simple. Very simple. Alright, but you gotta wonder, man. You see all these guys and they're that they don't have any ability to, to see. They don't believe the Bible and they teach falsely time and time again. And it's quite apparent that there is deceiver after deceiver after deceiver everywhere uh, you look around every corner and it's worse than it's ever been and this is sort of what I want to do is I want to show hey these guys are lying about this alright and then I want to show you what the truth is alright so I guess I'm gonna sort of walk back on what I said earlier I'm not even gonna show you what these guys say and sometimes what's the point well there's something to learn uh, by seeing uh, how these guys are teaching falsely but at the end of the day you know what really matters well the truth matters and there's nothing that matters more <clears throat> and really nothing else does matter all right just give me the truth that's all I want is the truth and so this is I guess uh, um, the, the focus of today's video is just the truth right just the truth because um, at the end of the day what these guys say it doesn't matter you know what matters is what the Word of God says <laughs> it, and it's so obvious all throughout the Bible I, I think uh, you know once you start to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands and you start to read it and you start to see your eyes are open and you start to see the connections and that's what I want to do for you that's what I want to do for you on a daily basis is to connect the dots all right to connect the dots to be able to see all right so in Matthew 24 when Jesus is uh, telling us about the end of the world the signs that, uh, that to look out for the signs are deception right it's all the deception in the world so when the end of the world comes and then we read here in Revelation 20 about the end of the world. I want to be able to connect the dots for you. I want to show you. So that it makes it easier for you to see. Because it's so hard to see when there are so many deceivers out there lying day after day. And they overwhelmingly outnumber the rest of us who just want the truth. You know they're making out. Meanwhile, they're making, you know, thousands, millions, selling their, you know, their ideas. They're making a lot of money, and they're gaining pop because they're popular, and they're gaining in popularity. And that's not going to reverse. All right, now, I don't care who you are, you're not going to change that. Things are getting worse and worse. All right, that's not going to change. I don't care how popular you are, the deceivers will wax worse and worse. All right, but you know, at the end of the day, it's very simple. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. And thank God for that. All right, when He comes, we are changed in a moment and twinkling of an eye. We are forever changed. Thank God for that. And then of course, when that happens, He will destroy all wickedness forever and ever. And thank God for that. 
right? And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Thank God for that. So after this, that's it. There ain't no thousand year period. Come on, go shove that up your nostril. Thousand year period after the end of the world, after death is swallowed up in victory. All right, come on, shove that in your nostril and go home, okay? Now, there might be another place you could shove that too, but I won't get into that. I just want to end it on this. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. <clears throat> All right. And it's the beginning of everlasting life. Our holy city is Jerusalem. That's, it's in the heaven. That's where we're putting our hope. We're not putting our hope in a thousand years. We're putting our hope in to everlasting life. Life that will never end.